some basic things that you need are the external structures of the heart. All right? Okay. Um, first thing is that we need to identify what are called the oracles of the heart. Okay? This is, this is probably the first thing that we're going to do. When you get these she parts, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify the oracles. Now, in most pictures in your textbook, when they point to this area right here, they're pointing to what would be the inside of the heart, which is where the atrium is. So they'll point here and say there's an atrium. They'll point here and they'll say this is a ventricle. But of course, they're talking about the hollow chambers inside, even if they're looking at the outside of the heart like this. The walls here, the muscle walls here that cover the atrium are referred to as the oracles of the heart. Now, you've got to make the distinction between the wall and the hollow space inside. It's the same distinction you make between a room and its walls. If I ask you, what is a room, what do you say? What is a room? How would you define it? Okay, it's not four walls. The wall is not a room. Yeah, it's the space, right? The room is the space. It's hollow, it's empty, it's nothing, right? But it is defined by its walls, right? So the walls create a space that we call a room. Same thing here. The external wall of the atrium is referred to as the oracle of the heart. Do you remember what the word oracle means? Remember what that word means? We had an auricular surface on the ilium, right? On the medial side, there was this little auricular space, and it was shaped like an ear, right? An ear. So when we say the heart has oracles, we're literally saying it has ears, doesn't it? Right? Right? The way these ears stick up here above the face, right? The oracles are like the ears and the ventricle would be like the face here. So you can barely see the left oracle here. Not only is the heart on its right hand side, but it's a little rotated too so that you know, you're looking at the right side a little bit more than you're looking at the left. Okay, secondly, besides identifying the oracle, you're going to need to, on a test, not on the practical, but on a test, you're going to need to be able to identify the blood vessels of the heart. You can see that the heart has its own blood vessels. Whether you're looking at the front of the heart or if you look at the back of the heart, you see blood vessels here. And one of the things that you would see here is that the blood vessels encircle the heart. They encircle the heart. They go all the way around the heart between the atria and the ventricles, between the auricles and the ventricular muscle. And they encircle it like a crown, right? And you picture a crown here. Maybe you picture it on Mickey's head, right, with his ears sticking up. Now, in... Latin, or even in Spanish, the word crown is the word corona, right? And this is where we get the word coronary from, right? So what we're saying is the coronary arteries are the ones that encircle the heart like a crown, okay? Like a crown. Let's take the crown off for a minute. And when you look at the heart here, and they, these are in your textbook. These are wonderful pictures because you can see the heart, but it's like transparent, isn't it? And so you see right here, here's the aortic semilunar valve, right here, and the first two little branches right there above the valve, there's two little openings, and a right coronary artery comes out and encircles the right side of the heart. A left coronary artery comes out and forks and then the continuation of that is called the circumflex artery. And so there are three arteries in the heart that create a corona, that create an encircling of the heart between the auricles and the ventricles. 
So the three arteries that encircle the heart are the coronary ones. Actually, all the arteries here are called coronary, but these three really create that encircling pattern. From this corona, there are descending arteries. There are arteries that descend down over the muscle of the heart and feed the heart. I, I don't know but that some people think that because the heart pumps blood, it must just soak it up. No, it doesn't, right? The heart is the most self-serving organ in the body. Every beat of the heart delivers oxygenated blood to the muscle cells that are doing the contracting. Right? It's, it's a feedback thing. If the muscles ever stop, then they stop delivering themselves oxygen and they die. Now, the four arteries that descend over the surface of the heart, over the surface of the ventricle, are pretty easy to figure out too. Um, because basically what you have is two interventriculars and two marginals. Okay, let's make the heart transparent again. And, and this is what you see. An interventricular would be in between the two ventricles, so there's one in front and one in back, right? Anterior and posterior. And then just like the margins of a piece of paper, the margins are on the side, aren't they? Right? And so there's a right marginal artery and a left marginal artery. It's kind of like the points of a compass, right? This isn't too hard to figure out. One in front, one in back, one on the right, one on the left. The front and back are interventriculars between the two ventricles, between the right and left side. And the two side arteries are right marginal and left marginal. Again, the heart here is just slightly rotated, so the right side is more in the visible and the left side is more hidden a little bit more behind. So when you go to name these seven arteries, if you think about it in these two groups, it's not that difficult. You've got right and left coronaries and the circumflex continuing the left. Can I name those three? Then can I name the four that descend? Pretty straightforward. Not too, too difficult. Then, um, each one of these major arteries here that is descending, after it delivers its blood to the muscle, the blood has to return to the heart, has to return to where it can be pumped to the lungs again, and this is going to happen through veins. And so there are four parallel veins here, right? You can see them descending over the surface, right? And these names are going to be a little bit more. These aren't so much right marginal, left marginal. And, you know, these have got somewhat different sorts of names. So these might be a little bit more to work on. The big one here in front is great cardiac. Over here on the right is uh, small cardiac and posterior cardiac here. Middle cardiac is the one right down the back. But each one of these, you should be able to name each one of these then you want to be able to match it with the arteries. Other than these four veins, the other structure that you want to name here, there's just five on the vein side. The fifth one that you want to be able to name is this little pouch. There's a pouch-like structure here, kind of on the left side in the back of the heart. There's a pouch-like structure here that all of this venous blood flows into. And it's called the coronary the four, drain, the four uh, veins drain into what is called the coronary sinus. Coronary sinus. We're going to find this in the heart when we dissect today. And if this is all deoxygenated blood, I want to get it more oxygen, right? So where am I going to put it in the heart? It's just circulated through the muscle of the heart, but now I want to get it into one of the chambers of the heart so it can go back to the lungs. So where am I going to put it to? Right? Going to go into the right atrium, isn't it? Right? There's going to be an opening. I have In the right atrium, I have an opening for superior vena cava. I have an opening for inferior vena cava. And there's always a third opening from the heart itself. The opening from the coronary sinus, allowing the deoxygenated blood that's been in the heart to get into the right atrium, mix with all the other systemic blood, 
and then that blood is pumped to the lungs to get brand new oxygen. So on the venous side, make sure you can name the four veins and the coronary sinus. And you'll very likely see these pictures, right, on the quiz. After you, after you can name them all, I'm sorry, not on the quiz, sorry, when we get to the test, the test is a couple of weeks away. When we get to the test, okay, not only do you want to be able to do that, but make sure that you can match them up. Can you take this picture and match it to that picture with your mind? Kind of like doing this, right? Can you do that? Right? And see, oh, this big one in front, there's a big artery and a big vein in front. Right? There's a right side one, there's a vein and artery together on the right hand side. Right? Can you do that? So if you said, here's the great cardiac vein, what artery would deliver blood to the area that this is draining? Right? You'd say, oh yeah, that's anterior interventricular. Right? Or this posterior interventricular, what, what vein is draining that area? Well, then you know that's the middle cardiac vein. So make sure you can match the, the four descending veins here with the four descending arteries over here. Now, one of the big things that, that a student needs to know about this is that... Um, when you talk about the arteries feeding the heart, this is a critical, critical thing. This is bringing the oxygen that keeps the cells contracting. There is no heartbeat, there is no blood pressure if these cells run out of oxygen. And of course, when we're talking about that, and let me just run through these. You know these already. I mean, you don't know them, but you know them. Contractions of the heart force blood through its own arteries and veins. Cardiac muscle cells supply their own oxygen because this, this is a self-serving organ, right? Supplying its own oxygen. If the oxygen supply is interrupted, then the muscle cells die and blood is not pumped. Now, you don't need to write down every single thing there. This is what it looks like when you do uh, when you do an X-ray type of image of blood flow in the heart. Um, when you do an angiogram, this is kind of what you get. Now, this has been colorized. This really comes out sort of black and white, but they add color to it. And this is what interruption in blood flow would look like. If you look up here, what you see is a great big thick artery and then all of a sudden it just squeezes like this and you've just got a little tiny thread. And you've heard of fat and cholesterol building up inside of an artery and making the inside smaller and smaller and smaller. Now look at how pink all of this is over here and there's a whole surface of the heart here where there's all sorts of muscle cells, but look how dark all of this is. This portion of the myocardium is not getting much blood. What? Yeah, the pink is, is where you've got blood. And you can see, like, here's an artery that's great big and open. Here's one over here that's nice and big. But you've got an artery running right through here that has been almost completely closed. And that's what, when you've only got this much oxygenated blood flowing through, the muscle cells that that feed are going to be starving for oxygen. So, so the, the myocardial, like, like, do the arteries come from the aorta? Yes, the, the coronary arteries come right out of the aorta, right at the base, right? right just right next to the valve. And, and we'll see that today in lab. Okay, so you should be familiar with that heart attacks are always associated with these coronary arteries. And you've seen, like you, you need to learn seven arteries. If one has a blockage, then we, have, uh, we may need to do a single bypass. If we've got multiple arteries blocked, we can do single, double, quadruple, quintuple bypass surgery. 
When we want to heal these, basically what you do is you don't want to mess around with the fat that's in here that's clogging the artery. If you tried to get it all out of there and you missed one tiny little crumb, that little crumb could pluck up an arterial somewhere and you'd still have problems. So typically what they do is leave this, they cut a hole in the artery right here, take a piece of the great saphenous vein, right? And then you just stitch it right around there and then blood, you can leave the blockage there, but then blood can flow all the way through the artery. So you're just bypassing it. You're going around it. Sure. Yeah, you just leave it there. The blockage is there. It, it won't hurt anything. As long as I can get the blood around that and back into the artery so that I get full flow again, then I'm okay. They also do angioplasty sometimes. Ever heard of that? They can actually, they've got a, a little wire with a balloon on the end that they can inflate. It's very, very small. But they'll open up your femoral artery down here and you can get all the way to the heart from here. You can go up the femoral artery, common iliac, up the aorta, up over the aortic arch. When you get right to the aortic valve, that's where the entrances are to these blood vessels and they're able to turn this and just move it, and you can go right down the artery to where the blockage is. You thread it right through the little narrow space here, and then you blow up the balloon, and it just mushes all the fat. It doesn't scrape it or break it or anything. It just mushes it open again. And typically these days, they'll put in a little wire mesh tube called a stent, and that'll keep it from collapsing again. And then you can restore blood flow that way without ever doing open heart surgery. You can just go in through an artery in your leg and, and open that up. So heart attacks are related to these. Okay? So that's, that's all we need to know here.